Jason from Bray's Caravans is going to give us some tips on what to look out for in UK caravans. Top tips to look out for when either buying or owning English caravan. The front windows are normally your bigger seekers. Um, they just don't seem to have enough um, water runoff and enough um, sealant to um, stop them from leaking. And what happens is, because you're opening your front windows all the time, the hinge along the top of the three windows um, actually becomes loose. And the screws that they use to hold the hinge on the top are very thin and they don't seem to be wood screws. Um, half the time they don't use stainless screws either, they use steel screws and some of them actually just rust and break. And what happens is the screw will actually become loose and the water will actually migrate through into the wood and work its way down and around the inside of the rubber and end up rotting a lot of the main frame around the uh, windows. So you need to check that your, your hinge at the top is not loose. So when you open your window periodically, you can check it every so often. Um, you open up your window and you can actually give your window a little bit of a shake and just make sure that the hinge up the top is not loose in any way or any of the screws have come out. The other thing that you need to do is the rubbers on the inside that these windows push up against. A lot of people don't realize, but the actual window when you clip it shut um, actually after time will bow the window so the window end up, ends up with a slight bow on it leaving little, little bits of gap here and there so the water will actually get in um, and what happens is the water then will migrate along the bottom um, part of the window and actually rot that out and once that starts to become rotten then you end up with cracks um, in the plastic part of the caravan and on this caravan here we can actually see hard to see on film but you can actually start to see where cracks are starting to form where there's a screw in behind the actual join part of this one. We had the same at the top and we've actually had to take this whole front of this caravan out and actually repair um, all of the top plastic part of this caravan and put in an extra strengthening piece on the back and then refiberglass it and then paint it all just to get this window to seal. That doesn't even come close to what we had to do on the inside. The problem once the, the rot has started is the plastic will start to crack on these caravans and that's where you'll start getting water. Yeah, That's the worst part. <laughs> yeah, one thing I, I find is it, if you can buy yourself a cheap moisture meter, that I think my last one was only seven or eight dollars, I know it sounds cheap, but all you need to know is that is there moisture in there or not? Yeah, okay. because if there is moisture in there I mean there's always going to be moisture of about 10 or 12 percent just in humidity and stuff like that but if you're starting to get readings up into the 60s or 80s or even 90s then you know at least there's a water leak and you need to either go to a professional or 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 try and find the hole yourself I mean don't get me wrong these the caravans are incredible what you can get for your money um, in an English caravan you've got you know your toilet your shower or your cooking your heating it's pretty well an apartment on wheels um, compared to what you'll pay for a New Zealand caravan it's like buying a Holden and an Audi in New Zealand like a Holden okay they're great hard working cars but when you hop into them you know they're pretty basic but if you buy an Audi or something like that they're very um, plush you've got all the bells and whistles and stuff like that and that's what it's like for a, a, an English caravan compared to a New Zealand caravan is, is the UK caravan this, this the, is this the is the Audi one? Okay. which will cost you a lot of money if it breaks down <laughs> whereas a holding you can just go and get parts off the side of the road <laughs> the, the second thing on these caravans that leaks quite bad is the seams so the the seams on these caravans um, they will let a lot of water in they don't seem to have a lot of sealant or um, they rely pretty well on pressure to try and keep the water out and New Zealand's water or weather can be very harsh it can be either really hot or really cold or very windy or very wet um, and the water seems to work its way into these caravans quite easily especially along the roof seal um, if you are running an awning on one of these caravans it would pay to take it down if it gets windy because the screws holding on these tracks um, are only they're very light gauged so if you get a good wind, 
what actually happens is that actually pulls the track off the caravan. Um, in a lot of cases, people won't actually notice because it's usually at the top, it's a, at the top of the caravan, it will try and pull. And what it will end up happening is it's pulled the screw just enough so that water will just start running in there and you'll start getting all these little like spiky dots along your roof. And that's mold growing in behind the, um, from the polystyrene growing into the back of the, the three more plywood in your roof. So once you've got spiky bits in your roof, then it's all over. <laughs> you really need to go and see a professional <laughs> and start again. The windows on them, from the heat in New Zealand and stuff, the windows will actually get a, a bend in them. They're, they're a two-piece window. The inside's supposed to be nice and flat, um, and the outside has got the, the bulb part in it. And what happens is the outside part, as it gets the bow on it, because it's rigid, the back flat window actually peels away from the actual window, and you actually get delamination. And what happens is the inside of this will smoke up, like, um, in the mornings when it's cold you'll get moisture in there and you'll end up the window actually start getting dirty and go mouldy and, and things like that so um, if you start getting a window that's starting to delaminate you can fix them yourselves you just have to take the stays off and you actually just lift the window completely up on almost a 45 degree angle and they'll pop out of the hinge and then you can put it down safely and you can actually repair um, by gluing them together. We use a gel, like even a gel super glue, um, things like that, and just pinch it together. And just make sure you can even put a bit of wood on it and uh, clamp it together and leave it for a little while so it dries. And then you slip the window back in and do your stays up and you, you should be good again. But it pays to do it um, probably in the afternoon. Let it dry out, let the moisture out of it, because what'll happen if you dry it up and it's moisture in there, it'll just stay foggy every day <laughs> so yeah we have that one the hard way big problems that you can have in, in um, inside the caravans with the gas is you if you especially if you're doing a lot of um, mileage um, and New Zealand roads may be great on the state highway one but as soon as you get off the beaten track and you start going down um, interesting roads you get a lot of potholes, you get a lot of vibration, a lot of bangs, especially if you um, pull over to the side to let people pass, you often will hit a pothole or something like that and um, the caravan will take quite a shunt. So one thing you need to check on, and if you can't do it then you need someone else to check it for you, is the gas lines and the water lines. So the gas lines, um, if you do get a rupture, um, there should be safeties in your caravan that uh, there to stop you from dying from carbon dioxide um, taking in too much carbon dioxide so first thing to do to check is that you should have holes in underneath your cabinetry that go right through to the ground because gas is heavier than air so gas will always hit the ground first and then if there's nowhere for it to escape it will slowly rise up um, luckily our beds are normally up off the ground enough and all caravans will have exit holes with mesh over them so that the gas will drop down. Um, there is, and I recommend, that you have a gas detector put in, which is usually 150 millimeters above the ground um, that's permanently plugged into your battery system. That way, if there, because gas is hard to, I mean, if you hear a hissing or there is a problem or you smell gas, then you know that you've got a problem. But if there's a small leak, um, that progressively gets worse and you maybe don't have as good a smell as someone else or, or something like that, then the, the gas detector is there for it to alarm and let you know there's a problem. The chassis on these are made really light. So the, um, the main runners on these caravans are pretty well just pressed steel and they can flex quite a bit. So you can get problems with uh, twisting and stuff like that so they're actually bolted together so when you are checking your caravan you need to hop under or have a professional checking for it the chassis themselves that goes from front to back because they are usually when they come into New Zealand they detach the front drawbar off them they unbolt it and that goes underneath the caravan or next to the caravan or whatever so when they come in on the um, container 
So when they bolt it all back together again, you hope the person really did bolt it up nicely. Um, but it's always good to check to make sure that the rest of the chassis has been not tampered with or any damage jacked in the wrong place or um, has any um, cracks in it. So you can get a lot of cracks, usually around this part of the caravan. Um, they do check for them when it comes to a warrant, but because a caravan is only really classed as a trailer, um, they usually only just jack them up and check the wheel bearings, check the brakes, and just have a quick overview of the chassis. They don't really go into depth, and because these caravans are on New Zealand roads, a lot of the dirt will get into the cracks, so you really need to have a really good look underneath there, especially even if you've got these movers on because the movers themselves can actually put a lot of pressure on the chassis when it's moving, especially on a tandem caravan, when it's trying to go left and right, it's actually putting a hell of a lot of um, pressure on the actual chassis. So the chassis can actually start to bend, and if you get enough bending, you'll actually get fatigue, and that's when you'll actually get cracking. Um, so that's what you need to look out for in these caravans. And thank you, Alan, Manuel, Pauline, Luther, David, Laurie, William, Braze Caravans, Kevin, and all my other Patreons. Thank you, guys.